Putting aside our sorrow, we renewed our faith in the prophecy that other rings would be found. And see how our faith has been rewarded. The Covenant used to be the main threat, and it was a MacGuffin in the original Halo series because the real threat was the Forerunner legacy and the Flood itself. The Forerunners have been the source of so much mystery throughout the Halo franchise. It was something that was just fascinating to us. So far, it's been a lot of stumbling into their belongings. You know, like we found Halos. And now we found something more. We found the Prometheans. There's a degree of animalistic fierceness that maybe you didn't see in previous games. The conditions and the context are what hit a hero and antagonist against each other. For this game, we're going to get to see a lot of complexity to their civilization. From their worldview, what they're doing has to make sense. Trying to figure out ways to tell that story without interfering with the shooting aspect of it has been a really challenging thing. We've gotten glimpses of this forerunner presence that was kind of always there, open as to whether it would ever erupt and it did. We're trying to really take game systems and manipulate them and give them emotional coloring and context. We wanted to create something that could stand alone and be an enemy that is just as challenging, just as engaging as the Covenant has been in the past for Halo. A lot of that initial discussion was around if you had this incredibly evolved race and they were well beyond humanity, the Covenant, what would that look like? The design process for the Prometheans was intriguing, exciting, and then long and painful process. I think just because everyone was so invested in what they wanted out of them. How do you imply something strong, something vertical, something different? And how could we actually have a global, logical language out of that foreigner philosophy? Anybody who's played Halo goes, okay, Forerunners is the silvery angular stuff with blue lights across it. That's really the language kind of in a nutshell. For us, it was important to break that, but still find kind of like a mathematical organization. We had to do a very clear separation of style, shapes, colors, right from the start. I think the knight's been through almost like 15 plus iterations of geometry. This sheet is like very traditional way of doing brainstorming. You just do silhouettes and then we take it and iterate some more and more and more. We didn't want them to look like monsters because they're not monsters. We had a version that looked very demon-y. These things on his back, they would go together and they would like flare out when the player was being spotted. We didn't want the Prometheans to look like robots because they're not robots. A version that looked very thin and spindly. We would see one, it's like, you know, that one looks cool, but it really doesn't convey commander of the battlefield. We had other stuff where they could clamp on and have these big, hulking, massive armors on top of them that would really change the variant look. For us, it was important to get it into something that people could relate to, which I think is always going to be a challenge when trying to take the foreigner language and create a character. Making sure that his head stood out, that you could see it, that players had the ability to headshot it. It falls also onto animation. They're able to bring these guys alive and make it feel believable and plausible and can still be very fast and lethal. Locomotion didn't look heavy enough at one point, so we scrapped everything and did it all again. The knight's like 12 feet tall, so if it doesn't feel heavy and menacing as it's walking around and doesn't intimidate the player, then we're not doing our job. There were not a lot of real life elements that we could take. Their joints, there, some of them are not physically connected. They're holed up with the space in between them, which is some of the features that the architecture has, which is big, massive buildings like floating, defying gravity. We wanted to keep some of that mystery and kind of the unknown in the characters as well. We even have the little micro driver arms in here, and then all the way to where we turn these layers off, and you know, the glowing skull. We thought it would be more of an impact if it's like a sarcophagus. It opens up and it's showing all this aggression. There's certain ways to approach fighting and lead with a group of grunts, and really what we wanted to do was change that up. The Covenant are tried and true. You know what you're going to get out of a grunt. You know what you're going to get from a jackal with his shield. The toughness of elites. Here are the brand new hooks to the sandbox. Prometheans are made up of the knights, the watchers, and the crawlers. One of the big focuses for us in the design of the Forerunners was to have these different enemy classes that would be able to work together. Having this dissection so that when the player went into combat, he's sort of tactically evaluating which order to take guys out. They don't act independently of each other. You put any combination of them together, and the strategy you need to engage with them is really different. There are a variety of knight classes. 
and each one of them is progressively more powerful. But your base knight actually starts just a little bit more powerful than an elite. But in addition to that, we wanted the knight to have his own set of traits and abilities. There's all kinds of these special features of each one of these characters that players haven't played in a Halo game before. You think about basic combat encounter design, a lot of the challenges designers face is how to introduce enemies. What would a Promethean do if it could bend time, space, form, matter? Knights can phase in out of anywhere. He's able to go where he needs to at any time, which is something that the Covenant can't do. Heads up! Crawlers can walk on walls, walk on ceilings. If a knight shield bursts, crawlers will come rushing at you and try and like melee the player to get more aggressive. These certainly slot into that grunt style combatant. And so there was certainly a want to make sure that we get a lot of them on screen. If you let too many of them get together, they become a really formidable force. One off, super fun to take out all together. It's like a pack of feral dogs. Its mandibles when it screams will actually separate and float around in the air while it's howling. The animation added so much fresh behavior to this character. It's very exciting. The Watcher is definitely a support class. One of the things we wanted to do with the Forerunner characters was constantly have them mix up their tactics and make the player react to it. The Watcher is able to regenerate knights. One of the things we needed to do when the Watcher design was coming along was make sure that the Watcher would actually fit inside of the knight. And that bursts out and swap to the actual Watcher asset. The Watchers are aware of the knight's damage, they'll protect them, they'll catch grenades, so they kind of coordinate their efforts. Prometheans feel like the most advanced of the bunch. They're able to bring all of their technology and wisdom to the battlefield. With new enemy class comes new weapon class. We literally concepted probably 200 weapons for this game before we settled on the half a dozen that went in. It's kind of like you've got that balance between humans' model of what a weapon's like and the desire to want to try and make something crazy and futuristic. We tried coming up with this perfect mix of stuff that was still relatable. You would still identify a weapon as a rifle or a shotgun or a submachine gun, even though they're almost magical. The Forerunner Scattershot was probably the first one where we really nailed the design on it. Everybody loves the hinge action shotgun, so we tried doing something like that so that the reload animation would be to cock it up and the front half would smash together. Every time you pick up a Forerunner weapon, it forms in your hand. So that sort of kicked off the component of having these guns form around the player. So there's that moment of like, oh, what is this gun? What does it do? And then when it comes into shape, it's kind of immediately identifiable. What makes the Forerunner weapons distinct is that usually they have dual purpose. So for instance, from the bolt pistol, you can charge it up and have something that's equivalent to almost like a shotgun blast. In the case of the light rifle, we actually experimented with doing dual firing modes. We tried to make it so that it was the best of both worlds with a BR and a DMR. It works like the battle rifle when you're not scoped, that has a little spread, has three shot burst, and it works like the DMR when you're scoped, so it's like a mini sniper rifle in a way. It actually changes to a different firing mode where the projectiles are stronger. One of the big things that we really focused on for them was making sure that the weapon doesn't just feel like a chunk of metal, but that it actually has glowing energy that's flowing through the gun, going down the barrel, so that everything is very full of life. The moment where all the Promethean effects really started to click the most was when we started showing the dissolve whenever you kill a knight. That was really when we started to feel, yes, this is something cool, this is something unique, and something that we haven't really seen before. This is an early prototype of the Knight E Res. As the sphere expands, you see the particles are birthed. And everything in the red region you see will be the crack and the erode. When you shoot and kill the Knight, the actual point on the body where you did the damage is where the dissolve starts. So if you shoot from his foot, he will de-res from the point of his foot up. The end result, when we blow up a Knight, they dissolve, proving that the technology works. I look at the changes that we're making, and it really feels like we're making a sequel to Halo 3. And that's exactly what we're setting out to do. We have the Covenant from previous games, we have the UNSC, we had all these things to take from, like, all right, we can make a new take on this, but we had zero information to some of this Forerunner stuff. We're not just on a Halo, we're on a whole planet now. We're not just threatening one corner of the galaxy, we're threatening everything. We're listening to the fan feedback. 
we're incrementally evolving different aspects of the game design, but there's nothing really revolutionary. And I think that's important because I think really good design is evolutionary, not revolutionary. And I think at some points we got in our heads with this game that we're just gonna make another Halo. I don't think that's what people want. They may think they want that, but what they really want is something that speaks to the things that they love, but then provides them with something new.